Howdy. This is a fair bit late, but somebody right after Jade Shadows came out, I can't remember who it was, someone recommended that I look at the Exergis again after the Jade Shadows update. Because it was strong before, but they wanted me to look at it after the update because we got like the Cannonade mods and the, what is it, the Elementalist mods and stuff. So here we are. The Exergis. Uh, this one near and dear to my heart because I love this weapon and it's the weapon I used on my 100 subscriber special level cap stream which was very rough <laughs> very rough and I played Haro in that stream look wait where's the skin there it is <laughs> here's the Haro I had used in that video ah uh, yes good times good times so 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 exergist if you don't know we'll quickly go over it's a shotgun that shoots Three pellets at base, has 3.33 fire rate, a magazine of 1, 1 1.6 second reload speed, semi-automatic, 0.5 punch through, base range of 30 to 60 meters, 8% crit chance, 1.4 multiplier, 36% status per projectile, which is very high, 140 radiation, 20 impact, 120 puncture, and 260 slash for a total of 1,620 damage because of the base 3 multi-shot. So it's slash weighted. It's a pretty decent weapon. You can see it shoots pretty fast-ish, kind of, although I have mag capacity in it. So this is what the build we have going on right here. Because it's slash weighted, we can just go for slash damage and building crit isn't really worth it on the weapon, or at least I don't personally think it is. Not unless you're gonna get buffs from outside sources like Haro or Arcane Avenger, but we're not gonna show that yet. Oh yeah, and in case you're wondering, see nothing on my Haro to affect our damage, and no companion. So this is a build that is purely for dealing slash ticks, right? We have Viral here so that we get Viral damage, and we have Slash proccing because it's on the weapon. There is a bit of a problem though, and that would be the elemental weighting on the weapon, right? We have much higher Viral than we would like. And I don't have any way of lowering the viral damage. I even have sweeping serration on the weapon to help increase the slash damage. So if you were to get viral from an outside source, that would be extremely nice. But for now, this is what we have. Damage, fire rate, slash weighting, galvanized savvy, which is important because it is multiplicative on the exergis. So big PB damage from galvanized savvy. Galvanized hell. Toxic Barrage and Chilling Reload. I don't have the 6060 Cold Status mod on shotguns, but this works out because the reload speed actually helps a lot. Although, then again, once Shotgun Vendetta procs, we don't need this. So if you have the 6060 mod for Cold and Status, that would be a better option. But again, I don't have it right now. And Shotgun Elementalist. Shotgun Elementalist is actually a very big buff for the weapon because the weapon only has a base magazine of 1. So if you want to massively increase your damage since it already has pretty good fire rate, actually, why do I even have fire rate on the weapon? Honestly, now that I think about it, we don't need fire rate. So we'll take that off. But anyways, regardless of that, beforehand, you would want to run prime ammo stock so that you could get the magazine to two. It's three right now because we have both of these. But you don't need this anymore. Instead of wasting a slot for just more mag capacity, as long as it's higher than 50%, it's going to round up to one. Shotgun Elementalist has 60%. So we get a 90% multiplicative damage buff to status damage while also having two shots in the mag instead of one. Shotgun Elementalist is a humongous buff for the weapon. Then you can also run shotgun or semi shotgun cannonade. This gives us even more punch through, which means we get, you know, to hit more enemies. It lacks the fire rate, which is fine because 3.33 fire rate, we're going to go through the two in the magazine in less than one second anyway, so we don't need fire rate on the weapon. And it gives even more damage than Prime Point Blank does, 240% instead of 165%. So both of these mods are a massive buff for the Exergis. It does, however, have a problem that balances it out, though. Which is the armor slash slash, or, or, yeah, armor and slash, or damn, I can't speak. The armor and health changes. When you're doing endurance content and le enemies are in the thousands of levels, enemy health is now more than triple what it was before. And if we're ignoring armor, then the armor doesn't matter that it caps out, meaning slash is much worse than it used to be. 
That being said, it's still going to kill stuff just fine. And I will show in a bit that you don't have to run slash. There are other options for the weapon if you don't want to run slash. I would actually run shotgun cannonade and prime point blank just for more damage because, you know, damage scales with slash and not everything does. Hang on a second. Why did I take sweeping serration off? Oh, because I was showing that prime ammo stack normally goes there. So this is a pretty typical build nowadays i guess you could say let's go in we are going to really need our stacks up to get our damage the multiplicative damage buff from galvanized savvy helps a lot so i missed my second shot you can see that's one shot there's two shots still pretty hefty damage though without any stacks now look though and as our stacks go up we're just gonna start decimating these enemies once we have max stacks, it might... Oh no, we're at max stacks. It can't quite one shot. Oh, never mind. It did right there. Or not, sorry. Not one shot. One tick of slash. Almost can't. But again, look at that. We can shoot both shots off very, very fast. And this is a slash build. The upfront damage is quite strong. It gets... Like, this is a slash build... Look at that. It They're under half HP from the upfront damage. They aren't even armor stripped. That's pretty freaking good. Even if we body shot this guy. Look at that. He's just absolutely decimated. Yeah, how about one body shot? Uh, I think that should kill. Yeah, it can body shot the guy and he's dead. Now, there are other options to this, though. Well, first off, we can go crit. Now, the problem is, do we really want to have to fit Prime Gravity into the build? We can. And yes, if we're getting crits, this will be more damage than Prime Point Blank. But, it doesn't go up that much because of what our crit multiplier is right now, right? So, we can actually not run that. Instead, we run a companion with Tenacious Bond. So now we put on Volklock so we have high enough crit chance. This will give us a flat 1.2 crit damage multiplier, putting us at 2.6. Shabam. And then we get a crit chance from Haro, like this, Arcane Avenger, and then obviously Covenants. So now we give us invincibility. We simulate these enemies. We are, of course, going to need to build up our stacks as per the usual. Here, let me just keep these guys down for a second. So they leave me the fuck alone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we don't even get a chance to, to, you know, look at that. They almost die to an upfront body shot. About half his HP from a body shot. Any amount of headshots and they're just going to get destroyed. This weapon is really, really good with Haro, obviously. Even with just Arcane Energize proc, look, we have Energize right now. It's doing some chonky, chonky damage. So, you can run it this way, but I feel like you might be better off not going with Slash. So let's say we want to go with an upfront damage build instead. In this case, I would say corrosive if you don't have armor stripped from another source. So, let us see. This build's a little messed up. Shotgun Vendetta. We obviously have the 6060s for cold, or not cold, sorry, toxin and electric. We can take off this. We take off that because we don't need it. Then we put in this, take this off because I can't fit it all. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fit all these mods. Okay, no, 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 I should, I should be able to. We don't need elementalists here anymore, except we do at the same time because it gives us the mag capacity, and having two in the mag before having to reload is still a massive DPS increase. So I would still highly recommend doing that. 
we could uh, honestly go both if we wanted as much mag capacity as possible, but that's really up to you. So wait a second. Or, 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 get this, we could put in Primed Chilling Grasp instead, however, I'm not sure if I can fit it into this build. Okay, let's say we take this off, and we move this. Okay, yes, I can actually fit this into the build. Maybe. There we go, there we go, there we go. Bam, now we have Corrosive and Cold as well. 66 thousand damage crispy if i do say so myself now let us go in we will take worm prime back off and switch our build back to not affecting our damage at all because we're not critting because you know i want it to be a fair comparison pause the enemies we're invincible or i don't know why i took invincibility off that doesn't really matter as earlier as well we need our stacks otherwise our damage is lackluster but once we get our stacks going you can see that killing enemies is now not an issue whatsoever it does not do as much damage technically as the other build does we are heavily relying on hoping we get corrosive procs that was seven corrosive procs pretty good but the upside to this is that if you're facing an enemy like with Ogre or something, an enemy that doesn't take big slash damage, then you don't have to worry about the slash procs. You also then don't have to wait for the slash procs. And if we're, we go with the crit build, I mean, we were already doing enough damage to upfront kill with a slash build when we have crit. So we might as well just go full upfront damage if we go for crit. So this will work even better with crit than the slash build would. That being said, said i'm still not sure which i would prefer to use it honestly might depend on what content i was running if we were to take prime chilling grasp off we lose half of our damage but then we get more corrosive procs it, i don't know i don't really think it's worth it which is why i would keep this oh wait now i've totally forgot um prime charge shell is a thing you could just run that for full corrosive to have consistent levels of arm strip. It should be able to easily one headshot those guys then, the corrupted heavy goons. I don't have prime charge shell though, but if you did, I would just go full corrosive here. Although, if you don't want to do that, you can always just go armor strip on something else. Like if, you know, I was mag or any other frame that has armor strip then you don't need to have corrosive in which case we could then replace corrosive take this off take this off come over here we have enough status that we could go blast and then when enemies die they'll explode for some chonky chonk damage so now we have this and i do need to replace this here with shotgun elementalist yes it fits just enough mag capacity beautiful now we come back over here let's see the damage first without any level of armor strip or anything just shooting the guy you can see in the two shots one shot is not enough to consistently get enough blast but two shots you can see does the explosion the explosion look at that these guys are already pretty low it's doing some pretty good damage look at that very good damage and then if you were to armor strip them well now we already have punch through this as well look at that shoot these guys this guy's almost dead it killed that guy <laughs> armor strip and blast with cannon aid and elementalist on this thing pretty funny pretty juicy and if we were to add viral into the mix it also it'll just make it even stronger one two and now that row is dead shoot that guy beautiful so now you still have the insane upfront damage of exorcist while having aoe because we have all of the punch through given to us from cannonade on top of the base punch through 
and we have the AoE from blast damage, turning this typically single target weapon into a pretty schnazzy uh, AoE capable weapon. So it's really, really good. It was already a very strong weapon before Jade Shadows, but after Jade Shadows, it's just even better than it was before. If we get a Tenet Exergis, I dare say this could become a meta weapon. Tenet Exergis with Blast? Oh my god. That would be snazzy. So, because I keep having people mention the, the mag, I always got to show it off, that way people see it. That's going to do it for the updated Exergis video post Jade Shadows. If you like the video, leave a like, subscribe, Adios.